Welcome to another edition of Robot Wars Extreme Warriors on the new TNN. Last time you would have seen the revolutionist hit the pit and propeller head went through to the finals. Today, you're going to see the return of Rosie the Riveter. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the master of mayhem, Mick Foley. How do I smash the... Let me count the ways. With a sledgehammer, a spinner, the flipper, or the axe? Or just do I shove you into the pit? Hey, this isn't poetry. It's Robot Wars Extreme Warriors. Where to win, you've literally got to crush the competition. We're halfway through the hottest robot tournament on television. Four finalists have already smashed, bashed, and crashed their way into the Robot Wars Extreme Warriors Championship show. And tonight's survivor will join them. Let's go to Carol in the Pits to get the whole story. Thanks, Mick. Hi, I'm Carol Groh, and I'm down in the pits. I'm keeping one eye on the repairs, one eye on the rumble. And I'll tell you, out there in their arena, it's a war zone. But by the end of the night, out of all the teams that have fought, we're going to see who's going home in a trash bag and who will be going on to the championship. Whew, it's going to get ugly. And Carol, I know ugly when I see it because I own a mirror. But you don't know the half of it yet. In addition to each other, the Warriors have to contend with the resident robots who are lurking in the corner patrol zones, ready to wreak some serious damage on anyone who strays their way. Let's get to the battle board and get our first matchup. All right, Mick, the bots who will be battling it out today will be Mecha Droid up against Darkness and Techno Trousers. But first up, the return of Rosie the Riveter up against Night Stalker and Basenji. Basenji, welcome to Robot Wars Extreme Warriors. This is your first season competing. Are you excited? Do you have a strategy? We're excited. Yeah, the strategy is to move fast and keep away from some of these really destructive robots. Tell me about the name Basenji. Where did you get that from? Well, Basenji is an ancient Egyptian dog breed. The pharaohs had the dogs. They were extremely good hunters, so we hope to hunt down some robots and maybe chew them up. Well, sounds like you got a game plan. I wish you the best of luck and have fun. Thanks, Carl. Night Stalker, what a vicious name. Where'd you come up with that? We work for the U.S. Border Patrol, and it's a symbol for us. Tell me about your robot. It's built on a wheel, two wheelchair motors. It runs on a winch motor. Wow. And this is the actual weapon right here? Yes. We take these silver teeth, and we spin them at over 1,000 RPM. They turn so fast, it appears to be a blur. Well, you go the distance, and I wish you lots of luck. Thank you very much. I'm here with Rosie the Riveter. You were here for the U.S. Championships last season, but you didn't do so well. What do you plan to do differently this time? Well, we have an all-new robot um, with thicker metal. Uh, we've got better weapons. We have uh, an active weapon on the front now, which is a wedge and a 24-volt saw. And your opposition? Our opposition is Night Stalker, who's new, and they're a spinner. I've always wanted to fight a spinner, so we're going to give it to him full throttle and hope that, you know, they, we don't kill him right out. And then we're going to give it, you know, all guns to the, to the next round. Oregon, Rosie the Riveter 2. And the return of Rosie the Riveter at 215 pounds. He's got a belt-driven metal saw and two vertical titanium blades on the back as wedge killers. From Yuma, Arizona, Night Stalker. There's the 220-pound Night Stalker doing a little border patrolling on its own with that four-and-a-half-foot diameter blade around the edge there. From Baldwinsville, New York, Basenji. Last but not least, the four-wheel drive Basenji at 184 pounds. He's invertible, and he's made out of titanium and aluminum. Roboteer. Stand by. There's Team Basenji on the left and Team Night Stalker on the right. And there's the Rosie the Riveter crew. And guarding the corner patrol zones in this first battle will be the flamethrowing Sergeant Bash. And joining Bash will be all 616 pounds of Sir Kilowatt. 
three, two, one, activate. And here we go for the first bit of carnage of the day. Basenji goes immediately after Night Stalker, backs in, and loses its whole saw. The whole saw just dropped off the back of Basenji, which I think was their only weapon, and that thing's just flown out of the arena. And now Rosie the Riveter gets in on the act on the Border Patrol, boys. It doesn't look like Night Stalker's got too much in the way of running away power. Meanwhile, it's a real party in that corner patrol zone, and Kilolot's come to sort it out. You come in there without an invitation, Kilolot's gonna make you feel it. But he's been gentle this time and puts Night Stalker bat in the middle of the arena. Rosie the Riveter on backup power. Not really using that wedge side. They've got spikes there. And Basenji back in Night Stalker up into the rails. Look at the bend on Night Stalker. We haven't seen any speed coming off of that blade. I think it might have been disabled right from the beginning. Oh, no, the battery packs are hanging out now. Not a good sign for the Night Stalker boys. Great strategy on Rosie's part, though, to stick him in the corner patrol zone and let Killalot sort him out. And now Rosie's going after him again. Rapbot's got the count down, which probably means that Night Stalker has been immobilized. If he can't get going now, he's going to be out of there. Only two can go through. It looks like Night Stalker's our first victim. Killalot's going to make him feel it, too, I think could be a burial in order here as Killalot drags Night Stalker ever closer to the flames. And uh, I think he's just going to heat him up a little bit before the inevitable pit drop. Or he might get launched. Either way, these guys better get back to the border because uh, Robots is not their forte. Meanwhile, Killalot is dragging Night Stalker up and over out of the arena. Their history. Well, at least they're smiling about it. Well, in all my days at Robot Wars, I don't think I've ever seen one robot so thoroughly dominated. Night Stalker literally thrown out of the arena, so Night Stalker will not move on. Rosie the Riveter and Basenji will. seen a team so thoroughly dominated in Robot Wars. I don't think I've ever seen a team enjoy being dominated like you were. And uh, I know, Tim, you're a history buff. How does it feel to be a part of history right now? I feel that I have set the standard for losing in the quickest amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> and you did it in excellent style also. Now, Basenji, how does it feel to be moving on in the tournament? We're barely moving on. Uh, I got some problems. I'll have to fix it up at the end there. But I got to admit, it seemed like Rosie the Riveter was pulling the weight for everybody. Now, <laughs> was the saw working, or was it just the, the pushing power of the Riveter that was the uh, spelled the end for these, this guy, guy? Well, mostly it was the pushing power. We hooked the saw up backwards, which loosened the nut, and the nut flew off. I think we got a couple of good cuts underneath okay. there. We haven't had a chance to look at it. Well, I'm looking at you guys as one of the favorites to move on, uh, but it was an impressive performance, not just by you, but by you. I'm really impressed with that. That's the ability to smile in the face of danger. We'll be back. Okay, okay. You'll be back someday, but not today. But uh, all right, let's hear it for all these teams. There it is, Night Stalker gets put out of its misery as Rosie the Riveter and Basenji move through. Well, it looks like the Night Stalker might just have to quit his day job as he is mauled by Sir Killalot and ends up tossed out of the arena like yesterday's garbage. When we come back, Basenji and Rosie go on to round two and will face brand new opponents. Who will prevail? You don't want to miss it. Welcome back to Robot Wars Extreme Warriors. We've had our first casualty, and it's bound to get worse. Three new contenders are on their way into the arena. Let's go to the battle board and find out who they are. All right, with Night Stalker out, Mick, we've got another three coming up. Mecha Droid, Darkness, and Techno Trousers. Who's going to be the next victim? here with Mecha Droid. You guys were here in the last series with Red Virus. Where is Red Virus? Oh, the virus is behind us now. It went the way of the mad cow disease. All gone, over with. Had to build something better in the lab. 
Well, your robot looks very interesting. I want to know about all the weapons. Well, what we have here is uh, something that can hold the other robot, and while I hold it, then we can come with this axe here and try to uh, just uh, whack him, you know? The axe looks very vicious, I must say, and you've got a point on the other side in case yeah. you get inverted. You Correct. can use this side. Yeah, the robot is invertible, so even if they flip me over, I can change weapons with this other <laughs> pincher right here. Well, your robot looks great. I wish you lots of luck. Hope you come away with the title. Uh, we hope so. Thank, Thank you. you. You call yourself Spectre Robotics. You call your machine Darkness. Tell me about Darkness. Darkness is darker than most uh, robots. Satan goes into the woods and worships him. That's how dark Phil here is. That's, this is Phil, the driver of darkness. We have to destroy robots. It's all about beating up other robots, going in there, kicking some bot. And, uh, you know, that's what we're about. Are you afraid of your opposition? No, I'm not. Absolutely I'm not afraid. Not. No, no, because, uh, you know, half the idea is just surviving, and I think we can survive, and that's, that's, the, that's half the job right there. The other half is looking good, and I think we look good, and we're just going to keep going with that way. Well, good luck. Have fun. Thank you very much. Looks like a very dangerous area. You call yourself Techno Trousers, and this looks very interesting. Tell me about your robot. Well, this is our entry in the Extreme Warriors 2 for Robot Wars, and it's a um, hydraulic robot. And for more details, I'll turn you over to our chief engineer. Okay, Ellen, tell me about the weapon. Okay. Well, there's a lance at the end, and the hydraulic pump will pull the spring back by a cable, and it will shoot the lance into anything that's in the way. Did you help as well? Um, yes. I heard an interesting story. I heard that you weighed this robot on a bathroom scale. Is that true? Yes. When we got here, we thought we were overweight, so we were worried about drilling ho more holes in the robot. But when we weighed it, we were um, 84. Perfect. So we ended up putting another battery in. Well, I think it looks intimidating. I wish you guys lots of luck. Thank you. in Massachusetts, Techno Trousers. Well, they call it Techno Trousers because it looks like a giant pair of pants lying down, including the sacrificial suspenders. But you better watch out for that leg. From Acton, California, Darkness. And in the first goth bot entry in Robot Wars, we have Darkness at 215 pounds with a couple of rotating blades right on the front of that thing for weapons. From Lakewood, California, Mechadroid. Mechadroid in at 204 pounds with wheelchair motors, has an axe on one side and a pick on the other. Roboteers, stand by. There's Team Backseat Driver for Techno Trousers. And Team Darkness on the left and Team Mechadroid on the right. Joining in this round will be the ever-present Sir Killalot. And alongside Killalot, the flamethrowing capabilities of Sergeant Bash. Three, two, one. Well, that spear and techno trousers could be pretty awesome if it works. We'll see. There's Darkness off to a late start, backing right into Mechadroid. Darkness is only a two-wheel drive bot, which might be their disadvantage in this round. But who knows? Look how cumbersome techno trousers is. Mechadroid's got the axe into Techno Trousers and driven him right back into the corner patrol zone where Bash is going to come steaming in there, and he does. And he goes after Mechadroid, but Mechadroid gets out with Techno Trousers as well. And now Darkness gets swept up into the action. Well, this is a good old tussle. Nobody's sitting back just watching here as Mechadroid's just trying to bury the axe into Techno Trousers. He's actually pushed Techno Trousers into the pit trigger, which could be a whole other burial here without the axe. Sergeant Bash has lightened up Techno Trousers as the pit opens. And there's Mechadroid with the axe up in poised, ready, killing position. Oh, look at that! Right out of the blue, darkness goes 
pushes Mechadroid into the pit and then drops into the pit itself. And Techno Trouser squeaks by. All right. Two robots hit the pits, but Rula landed in there first, and it seems like a. After careful discerning, it seems like that uh, Mechadroid was indeed the robot to enter the pit first. So Mechadroid takes the long, lonely roll out, and it will be Darkness and Techno Trousers advancing in the tournament. I want to congratulate all four of you for what you did, uh, trying to destroy these poor kids' dreams picking on them, trying to humiliate them, trying to end their quest to advance in the tournament, but it didn't work out for you guys quite that way, did it? Because you ended up in the pit. Yeah, I guess I created my own death because I hit the pit button by accident, and uh, I guess I went in. I so how do you guys feel about it? You dominated the kids, and you ended up, maybe they'll get their revenge later on in the tournament. That, that would be fine, you know. We, we, uh, we like to play with the little kids, you know, and have them <laughs> beat us maybe, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. So it's nothing, nothing personal, it's strictly personal. business. We're, we're here to have fun, you know, and I've got to thank these guys for hitting the pit button because that, <laughs> that helped out a lot. <laughs> okay, guys, I love the Techno Trouser design. It was one of my favorite robots so far. Didn't look like the Lance was working quite the way you wanted it to, was it? No, it... I pushed the button by accident. Ooh, and pushed the button by accident. That's your sister, right? You're gonna reprimand her backstage? She hit the button by accident. That's a very bad thing. All right. Eat some of her cotton candy. All right, you're gonna eat some of your cotton candy. I'll tell you what, you guys are advancing, you guys are advancing, and jeez, I don't know what to tell you. You blew it for yourselves, but I think you did a nice job, and it's always uh, nice to have you here at Robot Wars. Let's hear it for all these teams. So as Night Stalker bites the dust and Mechadroid follows right on his heels, we've got Basenji up against Darkness, but first up, Rosie the Riveter against Techno Trousers. Darkness slips into round two undercover while Mechadroid slips into the pit and out of the competition. When we come back, the legendary Techno Trousers and Darkness get another chance to strut their stuff. Don't go away. Yeah, this is Robot Wars. Let's see if Techno Trousers, the mythical, the legendary Techno Trousers, can get his arrow weapon to spring out of his pants in the next matchup. Let's go to the battle board and find out who's up. All right, Mick, we're going to see Basenji up against the goth darkness. But first up, we're going to see Rosie the Riveter up against Techno Trousers. Down here at the tunnel, I've got Techno Trousers getting ready to battle it out with Rosie the Riveter. Techno Trousers, what's your strategy? I guess uh, Rosie the Riveter is going to have to have plenty of rivets wow. when we're done here. Wow, okay. Do you have any fears going into this battle? Uh, no. No, no fears We have at all. a top-notch, my crew's ready, and we're all set. Okay, well, sounds good. Rosie the Riveter, what do you think? Oh, we're looking forward to this fight. Uh, we've been watching this robot the entire event, and uh, we've been really interested to see how it works. So I think this is going to be the chance to see what it's made of. Do you feel confident that you have the upper hand? Oh, I don't. We never feel confident that we have the upper hand because you know there's so many different factors involved. But um, I think we're going to give them a good fight. What about you, Sharon? We shoot down robots, not kids. But we'll show you who wears the trousers. <laughs> My name's Jack, and I'm here with my daughter, Ellen, and my son, Andrew. We're here from Holden, Massachusetts, and we've ended our robot Techno Trousers. It's a hydraulically powered bot with a spring-loaded lance with roughly 8,000 pounds on the lance. And we're here to have a lot of fun, and we are. Hi, we're from Team Juggerbot. This is Tom and Sharon, and I'm Chris. We're here for pleasure. This is Rosie the Riveter, and she's all business. Roboteer, stand by. There's Jack Kurtz driving for Techno Trousers, and there is Tom Veretti driving for Rosie the Riveter. And with a changing of the guard, Matilda's first appearance tonight. Joining Matilda in the corner patrol zones will be the ever-present Dead Metal. Three, two, one. Here we 
go Rosie up against Techno Trousers. We haven't seen that spike working yet, but he's lining it up just perfect. Look at that. Well, I don't know if that was 8,000 pounds of pressure, but there was something coming out of it. Rosie has got her idea that she's going to have to stay well away from that spike, which doesn't seem to have recoiled, and it doesn't seem like it has much lateral strength either as Rosie comes in from the side. Rosie the Riveter with four-wheel drive pushing power pushes Techno Trousers straight across the arena uh, for Techno Trousers. And Matilda is taking advantage of it. Matilda with that chainsaw tail coming into the corner patrol zone and let Techno Trousers know it ain't a good place to be. And Dead Metal comes in and gets in on the act, too. He was right out of his corner. Pushing Techno Trousers right into that spinning disc trigger in the middle of the arena. Wow, Dead Metal with that saw going right down into Techno Trousers. Oh, these poor guys. Well, it was by luck they survived the last round. Jack Kurtz better get his driving skills together because it looks like Rosie has got the upper hand in this bout. There's still a little power left in Techno Trousers. I don't think much in the way of weaponry is going to be used here for that, but Rosie is putting him to the test as Rosie just rams from arena wall to arena wall. Poor Techno Trousers. So they are incapacitated. And Dead Metal is going to make sure because poor Techno Trousers was in that corner patrol zone. Now Dead Metal with the pincers and the saw pulls him out to the middle of the arena and Jack Kurtz is trying to figure out what he can do now. There's Rosie dropping right into the side of Techno Trousers again. Well, that weapon really didn't have too much of a show here. As Rosie the Riveter backs Techno Trousers into that big trigger. And it looks like Rosie's got company on her back. As Techno Trousers and Rosie goes a little closer to the pit, the audience knows what time it is. As Rosie is backing Techno Trousers into that pit, but he looks too big to fit or not. That's as good as it gets, and Rosie goes through. Z. Well, another riveting performance by Rosie, putting Techno Trousers down, down into the pit, kind of beating the pants off him, you might want to say. And uh, we're going to have a word with all the Roboteers and find out what went down in the arena floor. Yeah, I'm here with Techno Trousers and Rosie the Riveter. Now, uh, I got to tell you, when I saw that hydraulic dart, I had reason to believe that it might not be effective against the destruction, machine of destruction like Rosie, and apparently it wasn't. Well, we had high hopes. It's pretty uh, esteemed competition we're against today. But uh, we're going to go back, and we're going to be better. OK, now your dad obviously let you down. Do you still like him? Yeah. OK, they still like him. OK. <laughs> Now, uh, usually it's Chris doing the driving, or at least sometimes, and today, I gotta say, you looked a little bit tentative in the very beginning. Were you afraid that maybe a devastating defeat uh, for Techno Trousers might adversely affect these kids and uh, lead them down an avenue of despair for the rest of their natural lives? Well, I can't really be held responsible for what happens to them later in life, but uh, I just wanted to go out there and have a good fight, and we need to preserve a little bit our robot for the next fights and you know if we can also leave someone for the you know something for the opponent then they can go have some more fun with their robot too. All right, so. cool very well done very humane of you. Well thanks. And uh, Chris I noticed that Rosie uh, is very effective at utilizing the arena's walls to really punish to use the battering them. Will that come into play when you make your way to the finals? Absolutely. All right we don't want to give too much of the strategy away. You look confident, you got reason to be, because you beat the pants off of Techno Trousers, but they all did a great job. Let's hear it for the Roboteers. Well, there it is. Techno Trousers suspenders get suspended as Rosie goes through. Next up, Basenji in Darkness. It was a basic Rosie the Riveter butt kicking, sending the trousers to the cleaners, a.k.a. the pit. Rosie is going to the finals. When we come back, Rosie meets her match. Who will come out on top? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome back to Robot Wars Extreme Warriors, where Rosie the Riveter has advanced to the finals. 
Who will join Rosie in the final battle? Let's go to our battle board and get our next matchup. All right, Mick, we're going to see Pasenji and Darkness go head to head to fight it out to see who's going to go through to fight Rosie the Riveter. We're outside the tunnel. We're getting ready to battle it out between Darkness and Pasenji. Pasenji, what do you think your chances are? I think they're pretty good. We're, we're really not afraid of the darkness at all. What's your strategy? Well, the strategy is to lift them up with the wedge and kind of push them around and avoid those nasty cutting things on the front. Well, it sounds like you feel confident. Darkness, what do you think about that? We're going to put them down like dogs. <laughs> Just like they are. No, we're going we're gonna to go in there, we're going to have a good time, and we're going to fight uh, to the finish. We're going to see what we can do. So you're just going to win and have a good time? Going to push them around and have a good time. Okay, well, you watch out for those house spots. Oh, definitely. Yeah, i got to stay away from uh, Sir Killalot again. <laughs> Hi, I'm John, this is Maureen, and this is our robot, Basenji. We're here to have a lot of fun and hopefully slice up some people with my nasty saw. How you doing? I'm Valak Biden, Xavier Sykes, and this is my good friend, Scott Mellenball. We're here to uh, wreak some havoc on some other robots. Uh, we're part of uh, Spectre Robotics, and this is our friend uh, Darkness right here with our driver, Manny. He's going to wreak some havoc in that uh, arena in there. We're going to destroy some robots. Roboteers, stand by. And there's Valak Xavier Sykes driving Darkness, and John Cariotti for Basenji. And joining them in the arena will be Dead Metal in his corner patrol zone. Alongside Dead Metal, the Tusks of Matilda. Three, two, one, activate. Well, Basenji's had an easy ride so far, but it doesn't look like Darkness is going to let him get away with much here. They got those tires pumped up to maximum pressure, and the real strategy is about pushing in this bout. Darkness's saws don't seem to be penetrating too much. As they plow into the side of Basenji and lose their saw, Basenji's got some major alignment problems on the wheels, and Darkness has still got a saw left. It looks like it probably just have to drop onto the arena. They're sure not cutting very much. Almost cut his own tires. Oh, no! Breakaway wheels on Basenji. The dog gets legless as Darkness takes full advantage. Look at that. Just the axles are spinning. It's a four-wheel drive bot, but RoughBot knows it's not going to go anywhere. So the count is going down, and it looks like Darkness is going to go through to fight Rosie. And there's Dead Metal Barry in the 3,000 RPM circular saw right down into Basenji. Wow, this arena floor is cluttered with robo debris. Talk about your devastation. Darkness just having its way with Basenji rolling onto the finals to meet Rosie the Riveter. And as for Basenji, it was the NG. Hey, listen, one of the great advantages of, of my job is I get to learn so much. I thought Basenji was simply the place where Major Nelson and Jeannie tied the knot. You told me it was a breed of dog that the Egyptian pharaohs favored. But Gotta be honest, uh, today it looked like Basenji was the a bone that a pack of angry dogs <laughs> were chewing on. Do you think the house robots overdid it? Well, maybe a little at the end, but, and I thought I was doing very well until I completely fell apart. Yeah, I mean, you got one of their rotating drum blades off, I thought it was looking good, and then yeah, the wheels fell off. And then the, everything came off. Mechanical so it, failure? It, it looks like some bolts sheared off. And you yeah. know, some guys take the, their beatings rather well. You, on the other hand, look devastated. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hello, Darkness, my old friend. How you doing? I've come to talk with you again. Okay, a little Simon and Garfunkel for you. Looking very impressive, but you got the wheels off of Basenji, but you're going up against Rosie the River, who has been very impressive. Yeah. Do you think that same strategy will work in the finals? I think we're going to have to uh, do a little uh, beefing up and uh, 
charge our batteries. I know we had a little bit of a problem with the batteries. They slowed down quite a bit. We lost a lot of power, but I think we're going to do all right. I think you'll do all right, too. Let's hear it for all the Roboteers. All right. All right. Shake hands, gentlemen. So there it is, Basenji slipping into darkness. And Rosie the Riveter is going to meet darkness in the final. Oh, Basenji, what happened out there? Well, I think they call it catastrophic failure is what I think it is. <laughs> you lost a couple of wheels. Yeah, we sheared off some bolts there. It was my poor engineering, I think, on those, on those bolts. But they, they choreographically fell off at the same time, though. Well, I was <laughs> just about to ask you, if you had it to do all over again, would you change anything? And obviously, you said the engineering would be one of them. Anything yeah. else? Well, I like the titanium on the top. It made a lot of nice sparks when um, dead metal hit the top there. Visually cool. Visually cool. Obviously, bigger axles so they won't bend. Change yeah. a lot of things. OK, well, good luck next time, and we hope to see you back. Thanks. Basenji sent home with his tail between his legs. Get out of here, Basenji, as darkness takes him out of the competition. Will Rosie see the path to the winner's circle, or will darkness send her back to the scrap heap? When we come back, it's all or nothing. The finals, stick around. Thank you. This is Robot Wars Extreme Warriors. The fighting has been fast and furious. The casualties, too many to count. Rosie the Riveter and Darkness have emerged at the top of the heap. Let's take a look at how they got here. All right, Mick, we started out with six. Mechadroid, Techno Trousers, and Darkness were fighting it out. And Rosie the Riveter, Night Stalker, and Basenji fought it out. Let's take a look at some of the action. Three, two... One, activate. Well, from the beginning of this round, Rosie the Riveter was the one to beat. Basenji dismantled himself for losing the whole bunch. And then it was Night Stalker's turn to fall apart. Look at the guts flying out of that thing. Sergeant Bash came in for a little action, but Rosie wasn't done yet. As RefBot was counting down, Night Stalker didn't move an inch, unless it was helped by Killalot. And Kilowatt kind of helped it get warm, at least, as the Night Stalker boys just looked on in disbelief. Night Stalker was well and truly out of it, certainly by the time Kilowatt dumped him out of the arena. Cease. What a day. So as La Migra goes back to the drawing board, Mechadroid, Darkness, and Techno Trousers fought it out. Well, from the beginning of this, Bat Techno Trousers was suspended in animation as Mechadroid was getting the better of him, burying that axe and pushing them all across the arena every direction. And then it was a free-for-all with Killalot included and Darkness jumping in and out. Poor Techno Trousers was surrounded by bot hostility. As Bash got in on the action, Mechadroid was taking Techno Trousers to the cleaners, pushing them a little bit closer to the pit. But in the last minute surprise, Darkness dumped Mechadroid in it and then followed right after. Uh, it was kind of slippery to drive in there, but uh, it was good. So with the first two bot casualties out of the way, that minute was down to four. And they were Basenji in darkness and Rosie the Riveter up against Techno Trousers. Well, Techno Trousers from the start knew they were on borrowed time, and Rosie made them feel it even more. Because Rosie was out to Techno Prisoners, that's for sure. And Dead Metal and Matilda got in on the act as well. It was full carnage for the Techno Trouser family. I'll tell you, they better get a little more weaponry next time they come out. And Rosie used every aspect of that arena to demonstrate its absolute dominance over Techno Trousers. Poor Techno was just getting pushed around, but then ended up getting a bit of a free ride. Not necessarily to where I wanted to go, but it went anyway, straight down the pit. Well, they caught us with our pants down, but we're going to be back. 
so with Rosie through. It just left for Senji and Darkness to fight it out for that last spot. And Darkness came out like gangbusters. With a little help from Matilda, just to keep things even. But Senji had a bit of an alignment problem. And then Darkness had a weapons problem. But the icing on the cake is when the wheels fell right off of Senji, leaving them completely immobilized and making Darkness think they were fairly dominant. As Refbot counted them out, Dead Metal came into the action with a saw and the pushing power taking Basenji ever closer to an inevitable death. And as the audience chanted for the pit, the house bots had something else in their mind. More destruction on Basenji. Well, now, cease is my favorite word. As darkness goes through Basenji's history, it brings us to where we are now, the final with Rosie the Riveter against Darkness. Don't go anywhere, because when we come back, we've got Darkness against Rosie the Riveter. They're going to battle it out on Extreme Warriors on the new TNN. Thank you. Welcome back to Robot Wars. Right now, Rosie the Riveter and Darkness descend on the arena to finish each other off. We're gearing up for the next battle. Whoever wins this goes to the grand finale. I have Darkness over here, Rosie the Riveter over here. What are you going to do to this team? Well, we're just going to fly in and shoot them down. In the last battle, you were against a couple of kids. This machine looks really mean. Yeah, this is definitely a formidable opponent. Uh, they're veterans. they got a great machine. Um, we're, we're confident, but we're going to have to be really careful because anything could happen. Okay. Yeah. Darkness, what's going to happen to them? We're going to roll in and shoot them down. Do you think your weapons are up for the battle? Definitely. I think we're going to uh, come in, cut them, and uh, it's going to be mostly a pushing match, and I think we'll do all right. Okay, well, good luck. From Gresham, Oregon, Rosie the Riveter 2. From Acton, California, Darkness. Roboteer, stand by. There's Valak Sykes and Scott Millenbaugh for Darkness. And Chris and Sharon Gatman with Thomas Ferretti for Rosie. And the house bots for the final, Dead Metal with that circular saw. And joining him, Sir Killalot. Three, two, one. Here it is for a place in the grand finals. It's almost a battle of good versus evil. Rosie for the good old US of A and Darkness sponsored by Satan, according to them. Both four-wheel drive bots, both going head-to-head -head as Sharon Gatman looks on. Rosie's pushing Darkness right back into the rails. Rosie's got full drive power, but Darkness has not given up too easy. Darkness definitely a lot more traction here. The real strategy is neither one of these have major weapons to deal with, so we're just talking about pushing here. Major suspension going on with all the pumped up air and Darkness's wheels. But Rosie is relentless, coming after Darkness, pushing Darkness around. There's some major ramming going on out there. Now Rosie's got those spikes in reverse. And look as this over and under move goes. You can see the breakaway weapon come right off of Darkness. Well, they weren't using it anyway as Rosie goes head on right into Darkness. And Darkness feels the pain. Darkness is bent in the front and gets back down on his wheels again. Well, they're trying to figure out how to stay alive as Dead Metal's trying to figure out how to kill him. And in all the commotion, they go and hit the pit trigger. What a great battle this is. These guys are very evenly matched. Similar in design, similar in power. Rosie's just got the lower center of gravity. That might be the only advantage I've seen so far. The audience is chanting for, you know it, the pick. 
as Darkness's flags have been completely torched. They're both in the corner patrol zone, and the house spots are gonna make them feel it. Dead Metal is in there. Rathbot's running interference. The Gadmans are looking on to figure out what's next as Killalot is dangling Darkness over the pit. And Darkness gets away, fortunately, as the 10-second clock counts down. Rosie comes in for one more smash Rosie. as this one goes to the judges. Thank you. Well, that's what it's all about here at Robot Wars. Hanging and banging, knocking and socking. We saw plenty of that. But obviously, it's going to be up to the judges. So while you at home make up your minds, we'll leave it to the judges to make up theirs. Who will it be, Rosie the Riveter or Darkness on their way to become the Robot Wars Extreme Warriors champion? Let's take a look at some action. And as the judges try to decide on style, damage, control, and aggression, let's have a look at how even it really was. From the beginning, Rosie was having plenty of ramming power, but Darkness was giving it up as well. I sure wouldn't want to be a judge on this one. decision it will be rosie the riveter moving on unfortunately for darkness guys uh, i've got my own feelings about this you see in one of the truly touching moments in robot wars history chris and sharon uh, shared a nice embrace and uh, i noticed you guys uh, no embrace on your side maybe uh, you two are not really close enough to move on to the finals that's all right we're we just uh, enjoyed ourselves and uh, we, we lost to a better bot that's all right and it was an excellent excellent Good final point. Guys, uh, it looked like two very similarly matched up robots, but apparently Rosie had more power, seeming to kind of bull the uh, Darkness robot at will. Yeah, I, we had, uh, I think we had better traction. They're an awesome machine. They're really difficult to maneuver. We could get under them, but um, we didn't. We tried to stay away from the pit because I wasn't sure that we were going to be able to get him in there without going in ourselves. Well, it looked to me like you were the guys who opened up the pit, and I was a little surprised. But I thought you could have just kind of slacked off and taken the decision, but that's not what the Rosie the Riveter team is all about. You tried to put him in the pit. It didn't work out, but you won the decision. A unanimous decision, and I wish you luck as you march on to the Extreme Warriors Championship. Thanks, That's it for this week, but make sure to tune in next week when six more robots fight it out and attempt to become the Robot Wars Extreme Warriors Champion. Until then, fight on. Next time, we're going to see Termite, the Brawler, King of Diamonds, the Return of Tricerabot, Discotech and Dragbot. Only right here on the new.